It's in the rehearsal room that Ashton's genius, his gift for movement, is seen in action. These rehearsals took place in Canada, where young dancers of the National Ballet of Canada were starting to learn the two pigeons, which Ashton choreographed in 1961. All Ashton's choreography should look seamless, effortless. It is one of the characteristics of his style. Ballet's choreologists, Lynn Wallace, and the director of the National Ballet, Alexander Grant, have already taught the whole work to the dancers. Ashton is there to perfect the nuances and the details of the performances. He has spent his whole life observing, inventing, and practicing movement. He sees every detail of what a dancer does. I've always understood about moving, and this is what I can make dancers do. I can give them this feeling of, of, of being blown by the wind, so to speak. And you see, you're, you're doing it all up here. Not just there. Try it. Yes, now bring it across here. You see, you're doing it all out here. Bring it there. T. La. That's it. Yes, and it has meaning. Yes, that's it. Quite different. You get yours a little bit more, you should run. That is, that is. When she does that at you, Every gesture, however small, needs to be expressive. A great choreographer looks beyond the steps to the emotions they seek to evoke. Now you begin to work up. Begin to work up. Begin to work up. Rush down, right down the path, like that. Twice as much. Twice as much. Yeah. It's because you're treading too, too soft when you run. Yeah. Yeah. If you run this, you get the same thing. But if you clear, clear run, you get much more thing. Well, what now? Finished? Since 1961, Ashton has created ten major ballets as well as many small-scale works. 
does he find it possible to remember all the details of a work as old as this? No, I don't at all, no, because I've done so many ballads, I couldn't possibly in my career stretch it over a long period. And also, I, I haven't got that kind of memory at all. But I have a different kind of thing that, that if I see something, even if it's a very old ballad, I know immediately whether it's right or wrong. And I don't necessarily even remember what the step was, but I said, well, it, 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 that's not it, it's not like that. We must find uh, what was exact again. There. Don't get it done. It's the basic thing is to get the steps right, of course, like laying the bricks of a house, but what is important, of course, is, is to convey the intention of the choreographer and with sensitivity and, and with music. Yeah, yeah, much better. Right. Ah, you're dropping it. That's it. From the knee. What I set out to do is to, to make them look their very, very best and to, to, to give them the things that, that will help them to, to give a good performance. It's a bit bigger, that. You have the wrong charm a bit bigger. There, yes, that's it. That's it. Dancers don't merely dance the steps. They must possess them and be possessed by them. Otherwise, the story and the characters simply won't emerge. In this case, they have to capture the spirit of a ballet they've never seen and take over steps which were closely modelled on the characteristics of its original cast. Annette de Valois once said that you weren't very keen on second casts, on bringing on a replacement cast for the original people with whom you'd worked in creating the ballet. Is that true? Absolutely, yes. Because when I created on the person to such a degree, and I mean, the dancers become like putty in my hands, and, and if I've worked on them, I, they're, they're the only people I see in the role. And I, the moment a substitute comes in, I mean, it, it's not the same thing at all, because it's so manufactured on them, tailor-made on them, that uh, another person as coming in can disrupt my eyes. It's